just going to talk about density and pressure. These are like, you know, tools that you're going to be using in Chapter 9. Is this the main stuff for Chapter 9? No. Heck no. Totally not. But you have to know it. You've got to know this. Okay, so in chemistry, I hope you study density. Now look, the symbol that you use in chemistry for density is this. Just a nice lowercase d, and that's what I like. But just be aware in physics, for some reason physics feels the need to be complicated. If you open up the textbook or you look uh, at a college board exam, of, of an AP physics test, the symbol used in physics for density is this cursive, like it's the Greek letter rho. I don't like that symbol. You know, when we're solving problems, I just, I don't, I don't like writing that. Okay. So in this class, our symbol for density is the same as you did in chemistry. D equals density. Now, what's the definition of density? Mass over volume. Okay. So in physics, what will our unit be? What do we measure mass in? Kilograms. Volume is cubic meters, right? Because how do you, like here's a, here's a fish tank. You go length times length times length. In physics, we use meters for length. So you're going to go meter times meter times meter, which gives cubic meter. Okay. Hey, what was your unit for density in chemistry? Grams per cubic centimeter, which is the same as a gram per milliliter. A cubic centimeter is the same as a milliliter. Okay. All right. Um, so here's a question. A fish tank has the following dimensions. So this dimension here is 80 centimeters, but in physics, put that in meters. That's 0.8 meters. The width is 40 centimeters, which is 0.4 meters. And then the height is 0.5. Okay. Can we find the volume of the fish tank. Yep. So the way you find volume is you multiply the dimensions. Length times width times height. So you get a volume of 0.16 cubic meters. Okay. Now, the question here that we're looking at, um, if we filled this fish tank full of water, what would be the mass of the water that filled the tank? So you take this density equation, you can rearrange it for M. M equals D times V. Okay, that equation right there, solving for the mass of a fluid, this right here is very, you're going to use this a bunch. Just remember this. How do you find the mass of something? Density times volume. Now, what do we still need? The density. Look, the density of water, it's assumed that you know it. It's kind of like gravity. When you're taking a physics quiz, does the, does the problem say, oh, and by the way, gravity is 9.8? No. So in the, in the fluid chapter, water, would everybody agree water is pretty common? Water is pretty common. The problems will assume that you know the density of water. Okay, I know you know it. What's the density of water? Ah, you're still in chemistry. So what you guys have said, density, every period said that. Density is one, what's the unit? That would be gram per cubic centimeter, or another word, or one gram per milliliter. Was it the same thing? In physics, I mean, technically it's right. That's true. You're not wrong. Um, but in physics, what do we want the density to be in? We want it to be in this. Okay, so what would that be? If you do the conversion, it turns out that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So memorize that. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. So look, in my hand, I'm holding a meter stick. So a cubic meter is a meter by a meter by a meter. If you filled that space up with water, what would the mass of it be? 1,000 kilograms. So look, right here, here's one kilogram. So Alex. Multiply that by a thousand. Is that a lot? It's a lot. In fact, you guys know most cities require that if you have a water bed, anybody have a water bed in their house? They used to be common in the 70s. Like that was the sweet thing to have. You know, I was born in 74. 
And uh, I, I have memories, like even into the 80s, people had water beds. Has anybody you guys all seen a water bed? Do you know that technically, if you have a water bed in your house, you are supposed to have a permit from the city to have it? A water, oh, a water bed is where the mattress is basically full of water. You get on the bed, it's like. Okay. Well, um, why would the city want you to have a permit for your water bed? Because Yo. your floor might not be able to hold the weight. Your floor might not be able to hold the bed up. So, you know, if you have a king size water bed, that's a lot of water. So you put the bed in, the, in your room. What if your house was built in like 1950 and the floor is like not nearly as strong as more modern day houses. So you stick your water bed in there, you bring in the hose, you start what could happen? Your house could collapse, your floor could collapse. So my, my point is water is really, really heavy, very dense. Okay, um, so how do we solve this? So we're plugging in here, the density of water, a thousand <coughs> kilograms cubic meter. Volume, we talked over here, <coughs> 0.16 cubic meters. The cubic meters cancel. The mass of the water is 160 kilograms. All right, simple enough, right? Okay, pressure. What is, first of all, what do we use, what, what, what do we measure pressure in in everyday life? You go to the gas station because your tires on your car are a little low. No? Nope. Well, yeah, that is pressure. But in, in everyday life, like you're pumping up a bike tire. PSI. PSI. So that, is that, are we going to use PSI in this class? No. That's what we use outside this class. Okay, but you can figure out what the equation for pressure is from PSI. So pressure has an equation. So guys, in PSI, what is pounds? I'm sorry, what is P? Pounds. What, what is pounds? It's not mass. Weight. It's, it's weight, which is a force, right? Pounds is a force. Okay, what is the SI? Square inch. What is square inch? Area. So pressure is force per area, which is where we get pounds, right, per square inch. You know, pounds is a force. Area is uh, inches squared is an area. But we're not going to use this in this class. What will we use for pressure? Well, what do we measure force in? Newton. Newton. What do we measure area in? Meter squared. A Newton per meter squared has a name. So if you took AP chemistry and you've heard this, what's a Newton per meter squared called? A Pascal, which is the unit for this class. When you're doing pressure problems, you have to be in Pascals, okay? Um, so Alex, a second ago, you mentioned another unit for pressure. Uh, right now, sitting at sea level, you know, the pressure that we feel sitting here is one ATM, one atmosphere. Hey, does your body depend upon that pressure? Yeah, dude, without, without atmospheric pressure, you'd be toast. What would happen? Well, you wouldn't explode. That's actually not true. You wouldn't even burst. Um, but like if, if you went from here to the top of Mount Everest, there's a good chance you would die quickly. Your blood would turn to gas, basically. Your, your lungs would fill with blood because inside your lungs, the blood comes in to pick up the oxygen, and there's a very thin membrane. But what keeps the blood from filling up your lungs? The pressure of the atmosphere. So if you go to the top of Mount Everest and the atmospheric pressure drops, I don't know what the pressure is up there. I, I'd be guessing. Anybody know? It's not one point less than one. I don't know what it is. But the pressure up there is enough where, you know, your lungs could fill with blood and you die. All right, one atmosphere, how many pascals is that? This is a very important conversion. 101,300 pascals, which in chemistry, in chemistry you called this 101.3 kilopascals. Okay. And then there's also, anybody, I heard other units? Uh, millimeters of mercury. 760 millimeters of mercury. 760 torr. 760 torr. But these guys, you're not going to really, these ones we're not going to really use. Mainly, you got to know how to go from atmospheres to pascals. Okay? Now, 
fun things about pressure. So say, and this would be really weird, very weird, but say I was like, Daniel, come up here and lay on the floor. Okay, so Daniel lays on the floor, and I proceed to stand on Daniel's stomach. Okay, just imagine that. Would that ruin your day? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm standing on Daniel, right? Would, would Daniel feel the force of Spaldo? Oh, yeah, right? And by the way, what's the force of Spaldo? MG, right? My force would be my mass times gravity, right? So I'm standing on Daniel, and Daniel's like, Ugh. now, okay? What if I slipped on a pair of my wife's high heels, which I rarely do, sometimes, you know? <laughs> I put on a pair of my wife's high heels, and then I stand on Daniel again, and lean back onto the heels. Ugh. I'd probably poke a hole right through his stomach, okay? <laughs> So look, did, when I put, look at, when I put on the pair of high heels, did the force change? No, no it's still the same force, but what changed? The area. The, the area of the heel is very small, so if, if the area is smaller, what happens to pressure? It gets bigger, okay? Snowshoes, anybody worn a pair of snowshoes? It's kind of fun. You put on snowshoes, how do snowshoes basically work? The, area gets bigger, and what happens to pressure? It gets smaller, okay? Uh, a needle, when you get your flu shot, why does the needle, you ever wonder why the needle goes into your skin so easy? The, the, the tip of a needle has a very small what? Area, so you're gonna get a huge pressure with a very small force, right? Like, think about it, does the doctor have to push very hard to get the needle in your arm? Is the doctor like, Hold on. <laughs> no. no, dude. The needle just goes right in. Okay? All right. So, look. Let's finish. Let's do this problem here. We're finding. So, we have this tank of water here. What pressure does that exert on the floor? Okay. So, pressure. We're doing this example right here. So, pressure is force over area. What force does this tank exert down? Mg. What area is that going to be? It's going to be the area of the, the base, right? So you can calculate that area. Um, it turns out that that area is 0 0.032 <laughs> meters squared, right? I multiplied this by this, okay? So that's over area. Well, you're going to go, you're going to go point, oh, wait, hold on, point, point eight times point 0.4, which is point, oh yeah, point, sorry, point three, oops, point three two. So this would be 160 kilograms times gravity, and then divide by the area, point three two, and you are money. So what does this come out as? What, what unit will that be? Pascals. So what is that gonna be? Let's see, 160 times 9.8, divided by 0.32. That's going to be 4,900 pascals. Oh, we calculated the mass in the first part. Yeah, this mass, we calculated this in the first part. 